Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever Super Cell Bowl. Woo! Woo. <laughs> uh, Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, we are back, and this is going to be the final episode uh, for the Cell Bowl. However, we are still going to have an episode afterwards to talk with our first ever Super Cell Bowl winners. So please okay. don't uh, forget to subscribe and click the notifications button so that you won't miss out on hearing all the wonderfulness of how they made it to the championship and scored as much as they did and won the whole kit and caboodle. So, Aaron, are you excited to be here to talk about our winners for the first time ever? I am so excited. I've been driving you crazy all week because the <laughs> anticipation is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's been very hard to conduct class with you calling me, but it's been fun and I've enjoyed it. The you students said it was okay to really call hard. anytime. You no. <laughs> no, George, <laughs> office hours? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you my office hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just to talk about that, actually, I do have a tutorial that's out currently. By the time that you see this, it's probably already been out and the questions have already ended, um, but I'm going to be doing a follow-up tutorial on Twitter. So the first one was with the fetal maternal hemorrhage screen, like we were talking about when he was calling me this week. And then the other one, the follow-up is going to be on prenatal workups. So please look forward to that. And um, you know, if you haven't gotten on Twitter yet, make sure you get on there. It's blowing up with education. And there is so much that you can learn from there. Whether you're a pathologist, a medical laboratory scientist, or a uh, resident, or um, a laboratory uh, student. <laughs> exactly. Yep. yep. Aaron's had some amazing case studies on there also. And I keep retweeting them. So if, <laughs> if you don't know, <laughs> if you don't remember how to spell his name or anything like that, you can follow me or click on my account and you can find him too. So thank you, Aaron, for all the great work that you do on Twitter and helping educate the future of the laboratory. It's been fun. <laughs> hey, Tiffany. Yes. Can I say it? Are you ready? I, I am ready. <laughs> Are you ready? To Super <laughs> yes. And this will be the last blast, right? Oh, uh, only one more blast. <laughs> one more blast. Oh, yep. let's have a blast. Let's but have I'm a blast. I'm yes. excited. <laughs> All I got right. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. All right. So we are going to do uh, everything in a little different order today. We are going to have our tutorial slide first. Education first. That. Yes, education first. We're gonna build. Okay. We're gonna build the suspense. <laughs> All right. So the first thing that I want to say is that we had fifty-four responses in our international uh, event with the Cell Bowl, and to celebrate the wow. Super Cell Bowl. Samantha Pettit from Ohio, you get Ooh. a hematology hero yoga mat. Woo! Whoa, congratulations. Yeah. It is uh, six feet of fun. It might be six and a half feet of fun uh, where you can do your differential and um, RBC morphology uh, review while you're working on all that flexibility and muscle toning. Uh -huh. So, yeah, find your balance. Yes. Uh, you shift left and right on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please don't fall. Um, we are not we are not liable for any accidents that happen on the yoga mat. <laughs> yes, Matt, um, Matt Lab Lady Kill is not liable for these <laughs> for the cells you slip on. Yes, thank you very much. Um, if you want, we can do yoga sometime in one of our videos. That would be fun. I'm a yogi. All right. Well, this is important. That's absolutely right. You want to make sure that you've got um, stress relief and uh, keep your body well. So just want to show you this other 
whoa, this other line, Christmas line, lab for the holidays. So we've got um, we've got an L made of pipettes, an A made of an Erlenmeyer flask, and a B positive plate lid unit. And then we've got those um, red and green uh, venipuncture tubes. Because so. it's important to be positive around the holidays. That is correct. So. Oh. Merry Labmas, everybody. <laughs> Merry Labmas. Yes. Okay. So just got to get uh, that out there. Um, we're going to show you today the difference between the hematology section of the MLT uh, Board of Certification exam and the MLS Board of Certification exam. So if you go on to the ASCP BOC website, um, you can find the eligibility assistant to help you uh, de decide what the best route is for you to be eligible for either one of these exams. Um, first on the left here, I'm going to do the MLT part since I'm an MLT program director. And Aaron, you can go ahead and do the MLS since you're an MLS also. <laughs> so um, really, we're just focusing on the hematology section here. So you're looking at the physiology, disease states, um, laboratory testing, and hemostasis. So that's coagulation. So it's not just what you're thinking of with CBC and peripheral blood smear. It's also the coagulation portion of it also. So these tutorials that we've been running um, in every episode, they're just the start to what you'll need to know in order to pass the hematology section of your ASCP exam. And so remember that these are the requirements for the national ASCP, but also the international version of the ASCP exam. So in hematology for MLT, it's a higher percentage than I believe, yes. Um, and you'll, Aaron will talk about that in a second. So it's 20 to 25% of your computer adaptive testing. What does computer adaptive testing mean, Aaron? Depending on how well you're doing, uh, you get harder <laughs> questions or you get easier questions. Um, and the thing to remember too, is that once you reach the point where the exam knows you're gonna pass, the question level will and can potentially drop down. So if you're at the end of your exam, I still remember at the end of my exam, the last couple of questions dropped off to easier questions and I started to freak out a little bit thinking I was doing bad, but it's, <laughs> you've reached a point where the test knows you're going to reach, you're gonna pass. So some of those questions can drop off at the end. Absolutely. So, so if you get, um, they'll give you like a hard question first, and then if you get it incorrect, they'll give you an easier question. If you get that correct, you'll get harder. And it's going to zone into the mean level or average level of how well you're doing. And it doesn't mean that it's just in one type of um, topic content either. It's going to be urinalysis, blood banking, micro, chemistry, hematology, and it might continue to um, just be random stuff. So uh, don't let that fool you. It's not going to be one section at a time. Yeah. Um, I remember when I took um, my exam, it was, um, it was very, it, it took a little bit of time to get used to just my environment around me. So if you are someone who is affected by your environment, like I am like visually affected and everything, um, take a few minutes before you start before you press start on your exam. Um, the computer I was on, it was like an old school computer and it was not what I was expecting at all. So take a minute to look at the screen, you know, gauge how you feel in your environment. You're supposed to be extremely quiet. People are watching you from behind in, um, you know, behind a glass window. You're not supposed to say or do anything other than take your exam and other people are in there. And even if you hear them, you know, tick, 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 taking all these uh, really fast keystrokes doesn't mean that they're taking the same exam as you. So don't, um, don't freak out <laughs> about 
it seeming like somebody else is taking a quicker time on something, they could be taking a completely different exam than yeah. you. And it's okay to actually, um, at the end of uh, my specialty exam, I took a minute before I even pushed the button and just got up, walked around for a minute after I raised my hand and then hit the, the uh, button. Um, and I highly recommend don't try to hug the lady when you pass. Um, I was very excited. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I had a different experience than you. <laughs> So when I um, when I ended the exam, you know, at the end, you're able to go back and review any ones that you mark to review. Make mm -hmm. sure you save each question after each time. And you can always go back to review before you hit submit. And as soon as I hit submit, the screen went blank, except for these little tight, like the tiniest font you've ever seen in your life. And it says you passed. And I couldn't see it at first because I was just shell shocked. Like, what just happened? Everything's yeah. gone. And then I read you pass, and I went <laughs> in my chair. <laughs> and I, I got up and I started dancing. And the woman that was watching behind the glass, she started dancing too. She came in and hugged me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I mouthed through, you know, the window. I passed, you know, and she's like. <laughs> and so we were really excited. <laughs> so let them initiate the hug if they're yeah, gonna hug yes, you. Yes. Um, but yes, it was very exciting. So um, you know, it can be a really wonderful experience. Just make sure that you have slept, you know, really well the night before, had a really good breakfast, or, you know, do whatever you need to do, mantras yeah. or just stretching or yeah. yoga. Um, Don't bring the yoga mat. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but, make sure you're breathing and relaxed yeah, when you're taking it. Kind of be at your best. Yeah. So no celebrating the night before or anything like that. Relax and stay focused to the night before. Okay. So looking down at this um, outline, this is all from the website. So that's what this is down here. And this content outline for both of them is accurate up until the end of this year. So December 31st, 2021. It looks like they may be doing a new review um, and maybe revising the outlines and content. So just to give you that heads up. Uh, so here it breaks it down into the pieces uh, that it said in the chart above. Uh, immunology um, happened to be on there when I took the screenshot. So this is not part of hematology. So um, notice COAG is over here. Uh, do you have anything you want to say about this, Aaron? Um, I'd probably say. Um... So the Board of Certification also provides you reference books you can actually use to help you study. Um, so your program director has been preparing you, your clinical rotation spots have been preparing you. You've, you've been studying, even if you don't even know you've been studying by doing all your um, observation hours in, in your rotation. So if you need additional resources, um, they, there is a reference book section also as well. Absolutely. And, yep. And amazing YouTube videos. Um, so. <laughs> so we have um, on the website, you can also find um, the procedures uh, booklet that goes through all the information about how to schedule it, your exam and uh, how long it will take for you to get your um certificate in the mail and all of that. So please make sure that you're reviewing that as well. Um, I can't tell you how many times students are, you know, asking, how do I do this? Um, I provide them the link and say, go through this booklet. This is everything you'll need to know. And uh, so looking at this, we have the physiology, which is basically, you know, how is it made? How is it, um, destroyed. Um, so like at the end of RBC life, how does the body recycle all of the contents and everything and make new 
RBCs, um, when is production? So we covered a lot of that in our tutorials of why does your body know to make these cells, uh, you know, what's the point there? So we talked about erythral poetin. We talked about your body's immune system being challenged. And so knowing how the bone marrow works is a really big deal. Knowing about maturation of the cells is a really big deal. And that helps you to understand all the rest of this like the disease states or conditions, um, how do you classify an anemia? Um, you know, how do you classify uh, leukemias using the WHO classification? So that includes that genetic um, mutation information that we were talking about with Ms. Go Lab, uh, <laughs> that one week on granulocytes. And um, you know, looking at your cell counts, differentials, how do you use the indices and the CBC automated results with the peripheral blood smear, you know, so um, like I said, everything that we talked about in our tutorials were a springboard. And yeah. obviously we could have delved in a lot deeper, but you know, we don't want our episodes to be five hours long, right? Yes, this is not Lord <laughs> of the Lab, but this no. is the cells. <laughs> But I mean, you bring up a great point. You have to understand how everything normally works and normally looks to understand how things start to kind of come apart or become different anemias and different diseases. And then even Absolutely. all the testing that we're doing, knowing about how you identify those. So it, it shows that you can pull the big picture together. Yes, if you don't know normal, then you shouldn't even be considering um, doing abnormal, um, you need to look at what is normal first. Why does it happen? Because if you know that foundational piece, anything that's thrown at you that looks abnormal or seems weird, you have in your head, okay, this is what I know about the bone marrow. This is what I know about the normal cells. How come this might be different? Oh, well, I know that spectrin is a, a protein that's inside the RBC and there's an interlocking um, set of proteins that ends up going, um, you know, attaching to the transmembrane proteins. And so if I see this type of structure of the RBC, then I know, oh, it has to deal with a spectrum deficiency or, you know, some type of mutation that causes a difference in the proteins that are making the RBC. And that's just one example, right? <clears throat> so knowing, knowing how something is normally made makes it so that even if you don't know what you're looking at, you can have an educated guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it'll help you as you are new to your career too, because you'll at least know, hey, I need to get a second set of eyes. This doesn't look right. Right. So, yeah. Yep. Know how to get the atlas out, how to ask your colleague for help, all of that. Yeah. So Aaron, how about the um, how about the MLS exam? What do we okay. see different there? So the MLS exam, uh, which is a majority of what you guys are taking. So for me, this is kind of now that you've competed in the cell bowl, it's kind of like what you do now. You go to Disney World or you take your board exams. Um, so it's broken up pretty evenly. Um, blood bank was one of my stronger areas, um, about 17 to 22%. Um, your analysis between five and 10, um, chemistry and hematology. So as you're looking at these, you'll notice that the larger sections do have around 17 to 20%. Um, so a lot of these are even going into more, um, you'll see like pre-analytical, the disease states, you're gonna have to be familiar with those as well. So there's lots of great review books that you can use to kind of help you prepare. Um, and then actually getting into the, the breakdown a little bit, if you're willing to kind of scroll down a little bit. There you go. Uh, so it's a lot of it's pretty similar with what you're doing um, for the MLT exam. You can kind of see them kind of side by side. Um, it looks like it's just getting a little more in, in depth. Um, 
but overall pretty similar. Yeah, they're almost exactly the same. Um, I don't know. I didn't look at all of it uh, to see what exactly the differences were. Um, the laboratory determination of hemostasis is a little bit different. Um, it, but it has the same backbone. So um, most of this stuff is going to be very, very similar. In fact, a lot of places use MLTs um, in the same way that an MLS is employed. So, um, you know, you all are very well prepared, no matter what kind of program you come out of. Um, there have been, you know, a great mix up of MLTs and MLSs in our competition this year. And so um, I think you all are going to do really well, especially with the different um, scores that we've been seeing. <laughs> yeah. So. And then with MLS, uh, the exam pretty much, a lot of it, um, I'd say, has more application questions. So it's just mm -hmm. um, that'd probably be a big part of it. Um, e on either exam, ASAP loves to take the knowledge you know and um, for those harder questions and have you apply it. So they'll give you a great case study where you're having to know normal and then have a slight little thing where you're having to apply multiple concepts. So uh, the MLS exam probably does that a little more than the MLT exam, but they're both um, knowing the board of certification. They're um, very detailed and they you really earn your certification, so be proud of it. Yeah, and even though our um, pass rate, not pass rate, sorry, the, the level that it takes to pass is only like a 50%, it doesn't mean that that's a, like a normal test where 50% is failing because since it's a, a computer adaptive testing um, model, you the severity of question, the level, is going to make it so that 50% isn't like a normal 50% where it's more towards failing. It's really, really good if you pass. Um, no matter yeah. you know what that score is, you pass, you pass, right? Yeah. And so um, I remember when I took mine, it was like no tests I'd ever seen before. And as Aaron was saying, it was more application-based than anything. And that might have been because of the level of question I had. I'm not sure because I only took it once, right? And you don't really get, unless you're on the board of certification, you don't really get to see what those questions are. Um, but from that information, I made my program to have um, application questions all the time with the exams that we take in courses. And I've had so many graduates come the day of taking the exam and they come right after the exam and interrupt class. And I'm very excited about that because I'm like, hey, and they said, I just passed my exam. And I said, really? Oh. And they said, yeah. And they said it was like taking your exams because it, it, they're like, it was almost like I was in class because your exams are almost exactly the same. And I said, oh, good. And Program directors love to hear that feedback of, you know, I don't, I felt like I was really prepared or no, I didn't feel like I was really prepared. So please, you know, once you've taken it, you're not supposed to say what questions were on the exam. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it is really great to go back to your programs and say, I felt really pre prepared because of this, keep doing this, or I feel like we could have been prepared a little bit better if we did this um, because I didn't feel like I was ready for that application level. So yep. um, yeah, we absolutely appreciate feedback all the time. Yeah, and in the lab and as you go through your career, you're gonna to wanna to be good at communication and providing people feedback. Okay. So it's important because you're gonna help the next generation. And two, the, the big thing is that um, if you, you don't pass for some reason, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You can, you um, <laughs> yeah, you will get to study. Um, they'll send you a breakdown of, you know, what, how you did. So if you know, you knew your weak area was blood bank, they'll send you a breakdown, letting you know, okay, you got 20% or 30% of it, or you, this is what your score was. Um, just keep going, mm -hmm. study, take it next time you're going to pass, keep the passion going. And, um, 
Yeah, the board, the BOC wants to make sure that those application questions, they want to make sure you can apply what you've learned because that's what you're going to have to do with your patients. You're going to have to take all that knowledge that your great program director like Professor Gill has taught you and <laughs> apply it in for to save lives. Mm -hmm. So don't Absolutely. get discouraged. Absolutely. So the whole point is not to make you feel terrible. It's to make sure that you really are prepared to step forward and be a life-changing um, agent. So make sure that you are prepared uh, by doing those study resources. I remember um, uh, my husband and I lived in an apartment at the time and I was sitting on the pool ladder with the review cards in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and just reviewing, I took the uh, boards 10 days after I graduated from MT school. It's now MLS school. Um, but yeah, I was so scared and nervous, um, but it was a good experience. And honestly, now, now that I'm a professor, I probably feel a little more prepared to take the exam than when I had just graduated. Um, just because now I know how to study better than I did back then. Uh, so when you, when you go to take it, um, be prepared to be asked those questions of what would you do in this situation? Because it's not going to be, what does this mean? It's going to be, if you're on the bench, if you're in the lab and this happens, how do you handle that? Um, you know, because that's really what we're trying to figure out. And being an educator, we have to track outcomes and um, make sure that everything is tied back to those outcomes. So we can't ask you an exam on a test if it doesn't tie to our program outcomes and the course outcomes and the daily class objectives. And so the same thing happens with the board of certification exam. They can't ask you something that isn't on these types of outlines, right? And so uh, the, there are committees uh, based um, on uh, participation by program directors, by specialists in different um, areas of the lab. And uh, they all work together to keep revising the test bank and to uh, make sure that it's applicable to the current times and that uh, what, what test questions are available make sense because there might have been you know, changes in testing and everything, yeah. so. And they meet um, actually throughout the year multiple times. They've got a big meeting where they all get together for a few days and, and go through exam questions. So you may be getting ready for the exam now, but you never know in several years later, you could be helping to write the exam, so. It's, Good to kind of get out there and volunteer. So, Absolutely. Professor Gill, I have a question. Yes. Do you have a preferred re review book that you like your students to use? Um. Well, um. I I usually uh, send them to the cards, the Pla uh, Plansky review cards. Um, there's only two versions that I know that are out currently. Um, and I was actually going through some of them and I saw a couple of outdated things in there. So um, the textbooks that you're using for class are really going to be the best things that you can use. And if you look at your, um, if you look at the BOC website, they're going to point you to the textbooks. Um, so we were taught, we've been using RODAC's hematology textbook. That is actually one of the resources for the hematology section. So I was trying to, you know, gear everybody yeah. towards that. There's also the BOC um, study guide that you can use. And it gives you, uh, it gives you uh, previous questions that have been on the certification exam. Um, they're practice questions. So if you want to see how you may do, you may want to try looking at those first. Um, and for the winning team, um, they have the option of getting that as well as if you are a student, you can also get the online practice uh, computer adaptive test. Um, and so if you're a student member, uh, if you purchase that 
a computer adaptive practice test, they can um, just automatically send it out to you and you have it available right away because you are a student member. So uh, they have really, really great resources. And thank you for that question, Erin. That was a good question. Yeah. I remember there being, um, it's a yellow and purple book. I think it's the bottom up approach. It was a pretty good book. But yeah, there's all sorts of great resources. So yeah, go back and watch the uh, tutorials and look at the references, they'll help you study. Absolutely. Anytime you're doing anything, look at references because they had to collect the information from somewhere. Yeah. Um, would you say uh, to look at the, the information that's within the last five years or because depending on what the topic is, um, it's, we are rapidly advancing in laboratory medicine and molecular is taking over everything. And so I, I feel like things that are maybe five years old or older may not um, you know, cover all those things. Yeah, so um, as far as getting ready for your MLS and MLT um, and ACPI exams, um, your references in your textbooks that you're gonna have are gonna be helpful and the list that the BOC provides. But um, like uh, Catherine Go Lab and um, a couple of the other people that are doing um, the doctorate in clinical cool lab science, I know a lot of them are trying to be cutting edge and the, all the information that's coming out is coming out through journal papers and publications. So um, they're having to go to the literature. So as you guys are going through your careers, you're gonna have to keep up to date um, through journals and reading and uh, ASCP and ASCLS and groups like that will actually help you keep current with what's going on in, in the profession. Absolutely. And I think this updated outline was actually done in 2019. So it, um, you know, they're already going to update it again after 2021, as far as I can tell. tell. So, you know, we are constantly altering what it is that you're expected to know as an entry level person. And if you look through all of these, um, all of these uh, descriptions, if you look, you've got molecular testing here, blood banking now has molecular testing also that traditionally was not in there. So now being able to genetically type the patient's red cells instead of just doing tube testing or just doing uh, gel testing, you know, you're expected to know when would you um, use genetic typing for the patient's um, RBCs, you know, what are the situations that happens there? And so one thing that I want you to know is that I'm going to give a shout out to Sue T. Johnson because she did a really great um, session at the annual meeting that included uh, case studies of weird cases, actually. <laughs> um, that <laughs> happened. Was a fun session. It was a great session um, about, uh, you know, working in the blood bank and when do you know to genotype those patients? I mean, like, you know, the testing's weird and you just say, forget it, we're just gonna genotype this person. Um, and so, you know, it used to be you just phenotype them and then you see what they have on their red cell. And then, you know, if they have that antigen there, they shouldn't be making an antibody to that. So then it helps you to understand why there is, um, you know, incompatibility that you're seeing with whatever unit you're providing. Um, but now we have genetic um, testing that is like second nature at this point. So um, not every place will have it. It might be a reference send out, but, you need to know that it exists. And so molecular testing is there. Um, it uh, should be down here too in hematology, but it's down in immunology. Um, I don't know why she's going outside. Um, so it's just, in, it's invading um, all of the areas of the lab. It is, and even yeah. a lab laboratory operations, that section's starting to get bigger and more important because yeah. as you go into the field, you are gonna be put into leadership roles. So you're gonna to have to be able to do quality assessment and troubleshoot and get into a little more of those leadership roles and just even making sure that your QC passes is essential to keep 
in mind. And not throwing out QC data points, right, Aaron? No. <laughs> <laughs> you do not throw out, yeah. Yep. So remember that conversation when Carlo was here, like, don't throw it out. Don't throw mm -hmm. it out. And mm -hmm. Aaron should know because he's now the QA coordinator of his lab. So he starts next week. I right? do. So congratulations, Aaron. Thank you. I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how you, you bring change. It's through data. Absolutely. So. So. All right. So thank you for that really great tutorial and um, explanation. Are you ready for the next part? I think we've oh heightened the anticipation enough, I don't you? I think they're going crazy. Yeah, I, I think and so I, too. Need, I need to know. I think we've probably already been fast forward through by now. <laughs> 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 so here we are still building anticipation who are the winners we don't know right <laughs> with so, weavers with four touchdowns out of the entire season right two three touchdowns by southern any time that we were we were gave up a touchdown southern was the one who was taking it they were picking up that ball and running with it right so who won do you think a moment of truth uh, i don't know it's driving me crazy they're yeah, both so, so good so i want to let you know what people online thought oh okay. gosh <laughs> go ahead <laughs> So I did put a couple of polls out in the first time that I put a poll out. Um, everybody was saying that either the, the West or the Midwest was going to win it and that the East only got a couple of, um, of votes. Okay. But then I put another one out later and that one, <clears throat> that one, we saw a little bit more. Uh, support for the East. And so the latest poll that I had out, that was three days ago, um, there was a 50-50 split. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> yeah. The nation nobody, can't decide either. <laughs> no, nobody decided who was going to win. They were like, we love you both. So, um, well, you can't really see it, but yeah, there was there was a 50-50 split, so that was indecisive. So let's okay. break, let's break okay. out the news. Moment Are of truth. Ready? Yeah, moment of truth. All right, Southern took it. <laughs> oh, yay! The East, but Weber. You're awesome. Yes. <laughs> Don't mess with the East. No, yeah, we're going to take it, hopefully. Awesome. Oh, my God. Look how 20.9 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that we... leads me into something else that I want to say. So first, let's just zoom in here. Oh, my gosh. All right. So they were less than two, well, kind of, um, like what? less than two seconds apart, just under two seconds apart, right? Either way, let me know where these people are working. I will yes. <laughs> make these my hospitals to go to if I get sick. Gosh. Yeah. If we're if you're on vacation, go out there. <laughs> They'll be taken care of you very easily. Oh, um, so we had a very close super cell bowl. It was almost tied. All right. Um, so the breakdown of the top six are. Southern West Virginia Community and Technical College with 20.9 seconds. Number one. Awesome. Great job, guys. Followed by Weaver State University, the Wildcats out in the West with 22.28 seconds. That's you guys incredible. kept us on our toes the entire you time. You did. Uh -huh. You, oh man. Uh, a lot of people thought you were going to win it because of how strong you were doing the entire game. You were setting the bar and everybody was coming to try to get it. So um, way to go. You, you've done amazing this entire time. Second place is not bad at all. Second place out of 72 teams in the whole United States of America that's impressive. That's very impressive. Yes. So congratulations, Weaver. We, even though we were rooting for the East, we were rooting for you too. We were just making a show, having a good time, right? Yeah, exactly. 
So then Catherine's uh, team, the Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, the Eagles landed into number three with 24.09 seconds. Congratulations. Aaron, do you want to take the next three? Oh, yes, West Florida. I am so proud of you guys. Finished four out of 72 teams across the nation. I can't say enough. You guys are amazing. Very proud to be from Florida. Great job. Finishing at number five, University of Kansas Medical Center, the Jayhawks. Uh, great job. You've got a, a Dana Baker there. Amazing job. 29.34 and rounding out UC Davis Health Sacramento, the Aggies at mm -hmm. 41.75. Mm -hmm. Still very amazing. Else in the top 25. Look at those times. That is, you guys are, are amazing. Yeah, you can't get a time unless you had a perfect score. And remember again, these are all your average scores of the first four weeks does not mean it was your best score out of the whole time. So um, you actually did beat the, the score that you have listed here um, a couple of times. So way to go, everybody. This this yeah. was an incredible, incredible a, event. A very long, tough season. You guys were fighting it out the entire time. Yep. And everybody was well represented, like we said earlier in last week's um, session. So there's our trophy. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> so we've got Southern West Virginia Community and Technical College MLT program. So yay for the MLTs, right? And that's that slide is labeled so we can that's read right. it. That's right. So this is the surprise that I wanted to say. I oh. threw down the gauntlet for Weber because I thought Weber was going to get it, but at the same time, was not sure it was humanly possible. Southern <laughs> West Virginia surprised me. Yeah, I, I really <laughs> didn't think it was possible. Southern West Virginia surprised me. And so whoever their MVP is from their team, I am sending you this backpack because I am extremely proud of you. Uh, whether you were from the West Virginia team or not, anybody who got that 20 seconds, I was, even though I wasn't saying it on the air, I was really going to send you a backpack because that's extremely impressive. So thank you so much for all you're doing, all your hard work, all your studying, all your practicing, everybody. This is truly amazing. And we're very yeah. thankful for you. You're maturing into some great cells. Absolutely. The bone yeah. marrow is great with this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. A little Love bit it. of Star Wars and hematology in there. Yep, Boom. all those segs <laughs> on that backpack. <laughs> all right, and let's go one more. Okay, so what are the prizes? So these are what the winning team gets. This is really exciting. Since you're representing ASCP, would you like to describe what's happening with the ASCP side? Sure. Uh, so the winners that we now know. Uh, I'm very proud. Um, we'll be receiving um, study materials from ASCP. So you should receive more information about the different materials you'll get to pick from. Uh, you'll get a story in critical values. Ooh. And as um, the winners, there is laboratory press. So the amazing exclusive interview with medical lab Lady Gill. Very, <laughs> very exclusive. And then all out the amazing group with e laboratory elaborate talk topics podcast these are laboratory educators and leaders uh Taiwana wilson uh stephanie whitehead and the winning team uh, to talk about the road to going to be doing next and Following these amazing lab professionals, they are everywhere with great leadership tips. You can log in and listen uh, weekly to all their great leadership advice. And uh, Taiwana Wilson has books. Um, they're an amazing group. So I, I can't wait to listen. Me either. All winners, yeah. <laughs> yep, so we have, um, excuse me. 
Um, these ladies are uh, dropping an episode every Tuesday. So shout out to them. Make sure you listen. You can hear them on really any podcast platform like Spotify. Um, you can catch them on Direct Impact Broadcasting, but they also have a YouTube channel also now. So yay. So follow them. Um, and please make sure you listen because they do have really great uh, topics that they cover and advice. So obviously there's my logo. That really is my lab coat. I don't know if you all know that, <laughs> but <laughs> that's my lab coat. I got my Red Cross um, and laboratory professionals pins and I don't remember. Oh, that one's my um, one of my um, awards at work up there too so yeah that's the clean lab coat that's yeah. not the one i really use ppe is very important mm -hmm. that's not one to use in the lab while you're doing testing though you no. want to know why <laughs> 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 i'm going to tell you why because i want to make sure everybody knows you need to use a non-permeable front at least lab coat even if you know you can have ones that are non-permeable all over um, make sure that it has cuffs, that it um, snap buttons, and that there is no embroidery or anything that can cause a, um, a breakage in the perm impermeable barrier. Sorry about that. Um, so that is why this is a dress lab coat. Um, you wear it as uh, you go into clean areas. This should not be worn in the laboratory. Um, it would be like carpeted areas like the office and going throughout the hospital. If you're going to the cafeteria, there you go. Yep. And if I'm going okay. to like a really a meeting sometimes too, I'll have my, my dress coat. Absolutely. So, yes. So that is our, um, those are our Super Bowl Cell Bowl champions. Uh, first ever in the entire history of the world. Uh, this wow. is. This is the first. And as far as I know, Aaron, this is the largest hematology competition ever in the entire world. Is that correct? Do you think? I definitely know in the nation, probably the globe too. You guys have yeah. really showed up. Yeah. Um, very exciting. So um, program directors, please look out for an email from me. Um, students we are going to be sending you a feedback survey through your program directors and faculty members. So if you could please provide us with that feedback we were talking about earlier um, of how to make it better, uh, how it helped you if you liked it or didn't like it, what did you like about the videos, um, all of that kind of information we will be asking you, as well as Miss um, Darty, Professor Darty, uh, from Southern West Virginia, I will be contacting you about when you uh, can do the live interview where students can come in and ask questions of you, including, and your students, um, about your rise to fame and <laughs> uh, what were your strategies uh, as uh, the champions and anything about your program. Uh, that they would like to know because maybe they might want to go there for their future schooling because you all are so awesome. <laughs> yeah. And I forgot one key thing. There is a super sell bowl trophy mm -hmm. that should be coming to, to their program. So we want to see a picture of them with their trophy. Absolutely. Kind of show off and yeah. definitely want to hear all those great stories from everybody about how they did and what they enjoyed. Absolutely. So look out for surveys. Um, they shouldn't be hard to fill out. And uh, that way we can still continue to do um, have you uh, supported and make sure that you're also championed. Okay, so this is the last selfie um, page that we're going to see. Oh my it's gosh. almost, it's almost it's very emotional. Uh, yeah, coming <laughs> to an end here. Um, so these were the only ones I got this week. Weeper unfortunately didn't send any. Um, and so uh, these were pictures um, from West Virginia. And I was told that these were older pictures, probably the beginning of the semester or maybe um, a little bit earlier than that. I'm not sure. 
Uh, we've Thank got the you. leaves in the mountains in the background, so yeah, but... <laughs> it looks like it was warmer weather. <laughs> yeah, so these are our these are our champions. These are our, our super champions. cell bowl champions. Yeah. So uh, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. You did amazing, and we're very thankful to have you. So great work. Oh, and any... um, we'll see you next time. We'll challenge you next time. Who yep. can take them and knock them off of their uh, <laughs> off of their um, I, I can't even think of the words anymore. Uh, yeah. their Who... their tower of awesomeness. <laughs> and will they? stay on top next yeah. season will will you all be the reigning champions for the next year yeah this is something to consider well, weaver has a grudge match i think for next year coming up i, I think they do i a know that CSM does. Is coming. <laughs> yep. um do you have any parting words for us professor gill um thank you <laughs> okay. i that's all i can really say is yeah, thank no. you yeah, um, they, yeah, thank you all. You made it a fun season. Absolutely. We truly had a blast. We did. And um, not in a terrible condition way. We were very no. happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, I guess I really should have thought that through a nice ending line, but I don't have one. <sighs> oh, keep keep making us proud. Yeah. You guys have done an amazing job. You guys are the future and it looks <gasps> bright. So get out yeah. there and keep making a diff rinse. Rinse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time. Look out for those surveys and look out for the interviews. Um, like we said, we'll have one on my channel, but we'll also have one with the elaborate topics. So please follow them so you will. Um, find when that episode comes out. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We're filming this right before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving and also Indigenous People Day. So um, thank you so much and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>